Okay, uh, my guess is that my laptop is getting so hot and the fan is making a buzzing sound. So some of the podcasts may have unintentionally have been posted uh, with that buzzing sound. Uh, if you complain to me, then maybe I can re-record it. In the meantime, uh, let's uh, think about Taylor Columns. Remember the Taylor Columns were for steady in viscid barotropic fluid, the uh, fluid was two-dimensional in a direction parallel to the rotation vector, which was represented as this, omega is the rotation vector dot grad u equals zero. So this was the idea that uh, parallel to the rotation vector, the fluid was basically two-dimensional, you couldn't have vertical uh, variations. As you remember uh, in the water tank experiment, a, a hockey puck was put at the bottom and the flow had to go around as if the hockey puck extended all the way to the surface. Um, we did derive this and uh, doesn't have density in it, doesn't have time derivatives in it, uh, low Rossby number, uh, rho ref, uh, incompressible fluid, we have simplified it to rho ref plus sigma, so sigma has got a horizontal uh, a gradient and we will uh, see, uh, as we already saw, unless you go deep you don't have to worry about it and so on and so forth. So are there Taylor columns uh, in the ocean as well? Obviously we have uh, shown currents which uh, were continuous uh, in all the oceans that we saw. Uh, so uh, there is no uh, stagnant column of water above the mid-ocean ridges and other ocean bottom uh, topography features. So how is it that uh, we can have Taylor columns uh, at all in the ocean, right? You should have if there are Taylor columns, Taylor Proudman theorem is valid, then above the mid ocean ridge, for example, it should be as if the ridge is extending all the way to the surface and there is a stagnant layer. Okay, what then happens? We are dealing with an interior fluid which is steady, frictionless, barotropic, let's say, and it's got Ekman pumping coming in at the top. If there is a Taylor column, as shown here schematically, the Ekman pumping can either fatten the cylinder continuously as water keeps getting pumped in, or it can stretch, doesn't get fat, but gets longer or shorter depending on whether it's Ekman pumping or uh, Ekman suction, right? But remember that the condition for the Taylor-Proudman theorem is that the it's, it's steady. It doesn't change in time, so in uh, going back to our uh, water tank experiment, you remember that in this case the angular momentum would be omega r, where let's say omega is the rotation of the earth, v theta is the azimuthal velocity of this uh, Taylor column going around the earth's uh, axis, and distance r from the uh, center of uh, rotation, you have omega r squared plus v theta r. If it keeps getting fatter like this and there is a change of delta r in the, radi in the radius, then the azimuthal velocity has to change to maintain the uh, angular momentum. So u, longitudinal or azimuthal velocity of the Taylor column, has to change by minus 2 omega delta r, which means if it got fatter, it has to slow down. If it got thinner, it has to speed up. Right? That violates the basic assumption of Taylor Proudman theorem of a steady flow. So obviously Ekman pumping cannot fatten uh, the water column. Can it stretch it? Can that be uh, in uh, can that satisfy the Taylor Proudman theorem in the ocean? Well it turns out that that can actually work. So imagine a thin sh a shell on the sphere and obviously we always define XYZ coordinate as the local vertical, but when the water column moves north-south in the meridional direction because of the Ekman pumping, which is in the local vertical direction, then 
the water column moves this way parallel to the axis of rotation you have the height D which changes to this new height if it moves south or if it moves from south to north or here to there it will uh, compress right so H is the uh, depth of this uh, water column in which the Taylor column is happening okay we're still not talking about the topography and so on and here is the latitude and the co-latitude phi and theta obviously uh, this is uh, a phi and we can uh, express sorry this will be theta and phi will be if you draw a line there nonetheless remember we did r as a cosine phi and so on so we can write cosine of theta as sine of phi and that is h divided by d sine phi is h divided by with d which is also cosine of theta simple trigonometry so we can write d the height of our taylor column as h divided by sine phi now we have to look for uh, ekman pumping so area times d d d t uh, we said the the Taylor column can stretch and satisfy the, the Taylor Proudman theorem in this case with Ekman pumping how will it work look at this Taylor column now parallel to the axis of rotation with an area A but when you look at the local vertical uh, then you have an area A prime which is perpendicular to this uh, latitude line that we have shown and we can write A D D D T which is the rate of change of the height of the Taylor column in terms of the volume of fluid being introduced so A prime times the Ekman velocity coming perpendicular to A prime and uh, A prime is just A over sine phi A prime is A divided by sine phi so W Ekman is uh, minus dh dt so you can imagine that uh, Ekman pumping is coming uh, in this direction so it's actually changing h but we have to convert into change in d so Ekman pumping is minus dh dt so that is uh, h is uh, oops uh, h over d is sine phi so we can replace that and write this as minus a times uh, d d d t okay so we got our Taylor column uh, expression so omega Ekman uh, w Ekman or sine phi is minus d d or d t whereas uh, we can change this into d phi d t times d d d phi d is just a function of latitude right what is d phi d t uh, that is just V divided by A. Why? Because V, the meridional velocity, is change in latitude with time times the radius of the Earth. So V is A d phi dt. Very simple manipulation. Make sure you understand it. Okay. So d phi dt then can be written as V over A, and d over d d d phi can be written as uh, the derivative with respect to phi of uh, d over uh, sine phi which gives you h cosine phi uh, divided by sine squared phi okay d is h over sine phi so that gives you v over a h cosine phi divided by sine squared phi because d is h over sine phi what are we doing basically imagine a Taylor column sitting here okay how can it why will it move equatorward if you start having Ekman pumping let's say because of the subtropical gyre and the wind stress curl and the Ekman velocities then this can move equatorward to balance the Ekman pumping addition of volume and satisfy uh, Taylor Proudman theorem by basically maintaining its um, height okay that's all it is so intuitively think that Ekman pumping into the interior 
has to adjust the water column somehow to remain two-dimensional parallel to the axis of rotation and it can do that by moving latitudinally which stretches the water column doesn't make it fat so the uh, flow remains steady so writing the same equation again remembering again our beta v equals f dw dz but dw dz can be written as w ekman over h approximately because w at the surface is zero and our delta z is h so it's w ekman minus zero divided by h so it's w ekman over h beta is of course df dy uh, f is two omega sine phi so we can plug that in and get beta to be two omega over a cosine phi okay where again we converted dy into a d phi okay the y coordinate is in the latitudinal direction which can be written as a d phi for small uh, dy okay so I don't know if it sounds complicated but actually it's not uh, all it is saying is that Ekman pumping into the interior forces the interior fluids to adjust and they can adjust to this addition of uh, mass by moving latitudinally which is the same as beta v equals uh, f